Hi guys and welcome back to part 2 for anyone who's still with me. The fir first part of the video was mainly just basics, um, standard work really, so nothing to write home about. But I, th I think it's still necessary to build up to part 2 where my method really does sort of stand apart from average, uh, well just normal contrast paint work. Right, so straight on to the parts of bone and cloth. Uh, this is just straight out skeleton hoard. Uh, I do believe this is actually better as parchment or cloth. Uh, I'm not overly keen as it as a base bone colour. Uh, it's not too bad for the Lord of Contagion because it's dirty, sort of rotten bone. But for average bone, I always tend to like to mix this one to one, 50-50, uh, whichever you prefer with the contrast medium to to sort of thin that colour out a bit uh, and then you can always build up further layers of darker bone by using a one to one mix, mix for a second glaze as you can maybe tell from the better shots I've got a webcam arm now so hopefully that'll be uh, we'll get some better quality shots here I did also think that I had removed the borders but I'm still not used to the software I'm using I think we get rid of them at about 10 minutes just a touch of Space Wolves Grey, just for the that little part of uh, the intestines, just to give that bluey vein deoxygenated blood colour. It's really, really good if you're wanting to to effectively paint any deoxygenated sort of flesh. Or even I found Space Wolves Grey is absolutely brilliant for say bags under eyes, um, you know, around uh, stubble areas, things like that. It works as a great colour for that. Uh, you may notice that I used a little bit there as well on his exposed organs to see how it would pan out. Didn't like the effect. Never be afraid to try new things like that. If you don't like the effect and you're quick enough, straight in there with uh, a lot of water on your brush, just wash it off. It won't affect the overall model. Right, so back to our original armor um, uh, mix, which is uh, one to one of skeleton, horde, and plague bearer of flesh. Uh, if you're like me, if you've made any mistakes on the model, it'll be driving you crazy right now. So straight back to the part watch we made the mistake on, and basically here what we're doing is we're applying the same color uh, we originally used, but just missing any areas that you would classically edge highlight. The paint will do a lot of the work for you, so that's that's another bonus of the contrast paint. And as you can see, this is where it really starts to come alive. As you can see, because of the flow effect of the paint, you don't necessarily need to, to be that neat with some of the more detailed parts of the model, such as the fingers. You can still get away with being quite liberal with that as long as you manipulate the paint uh, once you've applied it.
If you're not happy with the contrast you've achieved, you can always go back in there with an extra coat like I do here. As you can see, we're just using the original colours we did for the first coat, so Magos purple again for the plug. Just leaving any areas you want to leave as a highlight. I did mention in, I believe it was part one, that I'd used a different flesh turn for the original model. Uh, I did say I'd give a comparison, so here we are on the left, we have got the Glimmon flesh. Uh, and on the right, we are using the Dark Earth flesh, the one we're currently painting. As you can see, they're both really similar. Uh, either's good, personal preference, I'd say. You can really see here with the contrast method how easy it is on the minute details such as the tail part of this fly whatever it is um, how easy it is to get that edge highlight effect by just just applying a little bit of paint and the, the, the paint itself the properties of this paint itself will mean it pulls in the middle and you get those highlights which would normally take you a long time As you can see with the raised part of metal here, uh, you apply a little bit of a second coat to either side of that uh, raised part and then just feather the colour in so there's not as much of a harsh transition as you can. Basic non-metallic metal effect I suppose.
So now we're finally onto the flame, we're going to use neat Volupus pink to start and have the contrast medium on standby. What we're going to do is we're going to give a really liberal coat to most of the flame area. And don't worry if you get some of this on the brass and the skulls, the details at the bottom, because we're going to create a light source anyway. And then what we're going to do is make sure your brush, re blah, 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 make sure your brush is clean before you uh, use your contrast medium, so you don't contaminate. And basically, just wet blend the medium onto the tip of the flame, and then drag that back to the source. Ordinarily, with a light source, you would make the lighter part be at the source of the flame uh, where it's brightest and then it would be darker as it reaches the tip but with this being uh, like a warp flame or whatever you would class that as being um, I liked to do that here. I, I wanted to do it in reverse on this model but it would just add to the effect As you can see, I'm adding a little bit of light source on other areas around the flame. Um, didn't quite work on the bone, but it, you know, didn't hurt to try. I did get a bit carried away and put uh, used too much paint here, so just soaking up some of the excess with a standard brush. bit of Magos Purple, I'm just applying this to the source of the flame, where it's darker. Alright, tell a lie, we're back on the cloak again to, to add a little bit more shading while we let the flame dry a little bit, and then we will be using this colour at the base of the flame. Back onto Flesh Terror's Red for the top of the cloak. Uh, first time I've used this paint, I wasn't too impressed with the overall result of this. Next time what I'll probably do is thin this down a little bit for the initial coat uh, to make it a little bit more translucent. And then that what that what that will allow me to do is then use the method I'm using to to add a second coat, uh, making darker recesses and leaving those highlights, which is what this method's all about really. Skeleton Horde again for the burn. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm working against the direction again, um, which, as I say, works better sometimes for, for achieving those highlights.
onto the cloth just working into the recesses make sure that you don't hit every one of these just to give a bit of variation and uh, that will help this stand out Just mixing up a bit of Space Wolves grey here with the skeleton hoard to make a dirty sort of a brownie grey for the tube tubing and uh, some of the pipes. Uh, mainly because I don't have one of the grey contrast paints at the moment. Uh, I'm probably going to have to apply three or four coats of this overall eventually. It does leave quite a nice dirty look but you can use any colour in place of this if it's easier for you. I want this tutorial to be more about the method than the colours used as you can use any colours you want. So when you see me do some of the the smaller details like the little things on his his banner or whatever the hell that is on the back of his armor uh, I might not go into the detail too much of what colors I've used because as I say I want this to be about the method and it's, it's good for you to choose what colors you would like for your model I like to do a lot of oil painting myself and one thing I learned from oil painting is that a lot of artists will not use the colour black and not from the tube anyway because it's just too dull uh, and it, it too dark and it tends to draw the eye away from other details you've painted now if you look at anything around you that may be black what you what you can notice if you if you blur your eyes a little bit or you might even just notice it off the bat is that it, the reflections of that colour are tend to either going to give off a, a browny grey or a bluish grey. Now one thing I uh, learned from oil painting is if you mix blue, uh, normally a traditionally ultramarine blue and burnt umber, so brown, blue and brown, you will get a form of black. Now what you can do is when you add the colour white to that, you will you will get grey. What you can do is you can add a little bit more blue if you want that to be a bluer grey. You can add a little bit more brown if you want that to come out as a brownier grey. So this is good for things such as uh, dark metals or uh, say dark leathers. Um, so that's just another tip you can take on to uh, your models if you if you wanted. I totally lied earlier. We're actually moving on to Juiki Violet to to add a darker colour to the source of the flame. Uh, it works pretty much the same as the Magos Purple. Uh, it's just a bit stronger.
I ended up doing all of these yellow eventually. Um, kind of wish I'd left some white. I love the contrast that they kick out. These are the last shades we will use before we varnish the model. Um, so this is Reikland Flesh Shade and we will also use some Cassandora Yellow as well to just give some extra colours to those flames. The reason we're using these pre-varnish is we still want these shades to stain the underlying paint work. Once you varnish the model then what we're looking to do is, is not stain paint and just let the shade enter the recesses. So currently standing at about three hours to get to this stage. A um, little bit longer than it took me to do the first one, because uh, I'm having to be a bit more conscious about uh, the camera angles and things as such. But don't let time bother you. you. If you're enjoying yourself, you're doing it right. The only reason I include this is because one of the selling points of the contrast paint was the speed in which you can paint models. So as you can see, we've pretty much got the same result, or similar result as the original. You can leave it here if you're not comfortable with varnishing and things as such. But 
if you are, I'll do a smaller part three, which is uh, after we've varnished the model, I'd recommend it because it does protect the paint work you've done. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll do some recess washes, which also I'll explain the benefits of why why varnishing a model helps with that if, if you're not already aware of that. Okay, see you in part three, hopefully.